Hey bakers, John Cannell from Prep Bake Kitchen here, and today we're making this wiggly, jiggly, dreamy, and delicious banana cream pie. It is so refreshing, no artificial flavors, just lots of loveliness. Let's get started. You're gonna be pouring that delicious filling into the pie crust of your choice. I suggest a beautiful homemade butter crust. You can click up here for my perfect pie crust recipe. It has all my tips and tricks on how to get it right every single time, but let me take you through it real quick. 300 grams or two and a half cups of all-purpose flour right into the bowl of your food processor. One quarter cup of sugar, half a teaspoon of salt. Now we'll whiz it up, just pulse so it mixes everything together. I'm adding one cup or 226 grams of cold cubed butter. Okay, let's pulse this up a couple times. Drizzle in a quarter cup of ice water mixed with some vodka. All right, we're gonna dump this out right onto our pastry mat. I like to just use the pastry mat to bring it together a few times, flatten it out into a disc, wrap it well in plastic. You don't want it to be exposed and dry out in the fridge. Chill it, you can chill it overnight if you want. At least give it, I would say, an hour in the fridge. Once it's chilled, you're gonna roll it out, plop that into your pie tin. Just gonna trim the excess pie dough off with some scissors. I'm gonna hold my thumb out and then press in like this. So I'm gonna get a nice kind of rustic edge, but the pie will still be clinging to the glass edge. Add some parchment paper, some tin foil to support the edges, fill it with pie weights or beans, whatever you want. Bake it 425 for about 15 minutes. Remove it from the oven. Remove all of that tin foil, the beans, the paper. Give it an egg wash, tent the outside. Bake it again for another 15 minutes at 425, and then reduce the temperature to 375 and bake until it is golden brown. Now for the filling, we're gonna add two eggs. One, two, and then two egg yolks. So we can separate those whites. You can add them to your morning omelet, use them to make a meringue, whatever makes you happy. One yolk and two yolks. Wash those hands, whisk up your egg mixture, if only life were as easy as whisking eggs. Okay, now let's deal with the rest of the filling. So into a kind of larger, heavy sauce pot. When you say heavy sauce pot, you mean one with thicker walls, it doesn't have to be copper. If it has thin walls, they get really hot when you're heating things up and they will scald your milk mixture or whatever you're using. So when you're buying pots and pans, the ones with the thicker walls are gonna be better for you, FYI. So into that pot, I'm adding one and a half cups of sugar, I'm using white and cane sugar because I ran out, but any granulated sugar works. A third of a cup of cornstarch. This stuff feels horrible when you touch it. <laughs> but it's really great for thickening things up. So a third of a cup is gonna be about 50 grams. 50 grams of cornstarch. You can take out maybe 10 grams if you want to have it be a little bit more runny. The consistency is kind of more silky. If you add more in, it'll be more almost gelatinous and you'll get really clean pieces, but the mouthfeel isn't as nice. So it's kind of up to you and personal taste. Oh my gosh, my hands. Ah. I'm adding in a quarter teaspoon of salt, plus a pinch. There we go. And now three cups of cold whole milk. Whisk it all together, save your scale. Banana cream pies are so delicious, but I've been scarred by having bad ones in my youth as like in diners where they added in, I think banana extract or banana essence. Blech, not cool, not cool. The filling we're making is actually gonna be a really nice vanilla custard and you'll have pieces of banana throughout on the bottom, on the top with the whipped cream and it'll be really delicious and having those banana and vanilla notes without any artificial flavors. Once your ingredients are all whisked up, place it on medium high heat and get to stirring. You don't wanna let any of the milk burn. So just keep on moving, keep on moving. It'll warm up slowly, but then you'll see it start to thicken. So keep an eye on it. It'll take maybe five or seven minutes. You really wanna keep the mixture moving because the bottom is gonna thicken up first. So when it starts to thicken, you need to really, really whisk, 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 whisk so that you get a nice uniform thickness. Otherwise the bottom will just burn and the top is gonna to be liquidy, which is sad. So it's getting really frothy, but underneath, look, look at this, it's starting to thicken. Okay, 
There we go. So now that it's thickened, I'm going to reduce the heat to medium. Oof, my hand. Reduce the heat to medium and then this keeps stirring. We really want to make sure it thickens up. And we're going to stir on medium for about five minutes. So right now I'm going to add in about, mm, you know, half a cup or so of my hot mixture into the eggs while I whisk, 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 whisk. We're tempering the eggs. So we're heating them up so that we can add them into our hot milk mixture without anything scrambling, losing the consistency that we want. Once your eggs are tempered, now we can add them back in while we're whisking. Okay, we're gonna cook on medium for two more minutes while we whisk. These eggs are just gonna get cooked up and it's an additional thickening agent as well as making it taste delicious. Two minutes off heat. We're gonna transfer our hot, hot mixture into a bowl. Get all that delicious custard out. And we're gonna now whisk in a tablespoon of vanilla. You can use vanilla bean paste if you want. If you're doing that, I would reduce it to maybe three teaspoons. Ugh. Is three teaspoons a tablespoon? Let me know in the comments. <laughs> I am horrible at conversions. All right, one tablespoon of vanilla and four tablespoons or like, what, 60 grams of butter. Whisk that together, the butter's gonna melt in there, make it really, really smooth and creamy and the vanilla, of course, is just like stinking amazing. All right, nice creamy mixture. We're gonna cover this up. Oh, I just wanna eat this right now, all like, um, yum, 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 yum. Cover that up with some plastic. And when I say that, I don't mean cover the top, I mean place the plastic onto the surface so that you're preventing a skin from forming. It's not the end of the world. If you get a skin, it just means you're kind of like having to snack on that custard skin instead of using it in your pie. This can go into the fridge for a little while. It's really hot. You could just put it directly into the pie crust, but it's better to have it be a little bit more room temperature. Custard is cooled, or my swap out is. That's still a little piping hot. <laughs> and we're gonna add some bananas in now. It's time for bananas. Let's cut them, add a little bit of a diagonal. If you wanna make this pie a couple days in advance, make the pie shell, fill it with your vanilla filling, and then when you're ready to serve it, pile on a bunch of bananas on top, add some more whipped cream, bananas on top of the whipped cream. You don't want them to be like really brown and kind of like lose that ripe banana consistency. So that's my hint to you. If you're making it the night before, put the bananas on the bottom too. Cooled pie crust at the ready. I'm gonna add in a little bit of my vanilla custard just on the bottom. It'll be like an anchor for my bananas. Smooth it out so you have a thin layer. Now let's add a layer of bananas in. This pie will have a beautiful fresh banana taste with that vanilla and it's just gonna be amazing. If you're using artificial ingredients, it, there's no point. In my humble opinion. Now we can pour in the rest of the filling. If you want, you can do a couple layers of bananas and pie filling, but I like just one on the top and one on the bottom. There we go, look at all of that. So once again, this will be totally covered. So I should just stop, what am I doing? I can't help it, I can't. Give a little wiggle and you're ready to serve. Except this needs to set, I would say overnight. So if you're gonna do this in the morning, it'll be ready in the evening. Give it like four to five hours. If you wanna do it the night before, I think even better. Do you think I have a swap out? I do. <laughs> I almost forgot to tell you, make sure you cover with plastic before you put it in the fridge. There we go, nice and set. Little jiggle, but it'll hold when you cut it. Let's whip up some whipped cream because it is a banana cream pie. You need a big giant mound of whipped cream to finish this off. The amount of whipped cream is totally up to you. It's a very personal choice, but I'm gonna go for about two cups of cream. Whip it up with a little bit less than a quarter cup of confectioner sugar. The cornstarch in the confectioner sugar will help stabilize the whipped cream as well. Okay, keep an eye on this. You don't want it to over whip. <laughs> T 
totally lost track of time. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that almost went too far. <laughs> okay, add a splash of vanilla in. Let's whip it on low. There we go, all done. <laughs> Ooh, John. <laughs> Top with a generous mountain of whipped cream, and then I'm finishing my pie with a ring of banana slices. It looks really classic, and it's so easy. If you want, you can just dump them all on there. All the bananas for everybody. Okay, I've been dying for this vibe. Love that crisp pastry crust. Mmm. <laughs> oh, I just want to give it a hug and really just shove it in my mouth. It's so good. All the bananas, first of all, I'm gonna eat bananas and whipped cream as a snack now, that is delicious. But with the pastry cream and the crispy pastry crust, perfection. If you like this recipe, check out my dreamy, indulgent chocolate silk pie. It is just heavenly. Thanks so much for watching. If you like my videos, hit that like button and subscribe, and I'll see you soon.